Welcome to the Rotary Membership Action Plan Session 5, Ask Us Anything. And without further ado, let's welcome to our stage our RI Director and Santa for the afternoon, Jeremy Hurst. Jeremy? Thanks, Andy. And good evening, everyone. And welcome to our MAP Festive Season Edition. Uh, for any newbies amongst you, uh, MAP stands for Zones 33 and 34 Membership Action Plan. And for those of you who've been with us uh, from the start, you'll have had the opportunity to learn how to create a membership pipeline, how to connect with prospective members we generate, how to meaningfully onboard them. And during last month's webinar, how to create different types of clubs that meet the needs of today's members. We've had excellent attendance at our previous webinars, averaging around 350 per session. And we're really happy that each of you took the time away from what we know is a very busy schedule this time of year to be here at a regular Zoom meeting, our first, in fact, with us this evening. So tonight, this is your opportunity to literally ask us anything. Well, well, almost anything, as long as it's uh, membership related, of course. So to start with, we captured some questions, some of the questions you felt that were most pressing in each of the previous webinar sessions. And later on, we'll also try to answer some of your other questions. So please, as Andy says, type them here uh, in the chat box in all caps only. Of course, it's unlikely we'll be able to answer all of them this evening, otherwise this session wouldn't be bite-sized at all. But rest assured, if we don't get to your question, we'll provide a written answer later. You're of course welcome to contact us directly by email with any burning questions or suggestions that you may have as well. So one last thing before we go, great news, a big congratulations to both Zones 33 and 34 who are currently ranking number one and two in North America for membership growth. And also on a district level to District Governor Troy Willingham and District 6950 who are at the moment the fastest growing district in North America. Great job, Troy. And I know a few of us are snapping at your heels there. This is an excellent testament to the hard work each of you have invested to make membership front and center in each of your clubs and districts. That said, as we know, MAP is a multi-year plan, a marathon, and not a sprint if you like, and we still have a long way to go to achieve the change in our club, district, and zones cultures to achieve our overarching goal of consistent, moderate growth of 5% per annum. So let's take the next step tonight and ask those questions that help us build irresistible clubs and make our members' rotary experiences the best they can be and grow rotary. And now, it's my great pleasure to introduce your question master and moderator for this evening, the inimitable Rotary International Director nominee, my successor, my friend, the past Rotary coordinator, Patrick Eakes. Patrick, over to you. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate you getting us set up for tonight. Um, as has been mentioned a couple of times already, you can click on view at the upper right of your screen. I think that'll be the case for all of your devices. Um, and from there, you can choose a speaker view that will work well so that you can see the panelists who we're about to have to answer our questions. So let me introduce our panelists for tonight. First, we have Chris Jones. Chris is a former Rotary coordinator in Zone 33, and he currently serves as an innovative club advocate. He was one of the original innovative club advocates among the 20 in North America. We're very pleased to have Chris with us this evening. Secondly, as you can see on your screen, George Robertson Burnett. George is a former Rotary coordinator, just like Chris. George served in Zone 34, and George is also a current innovative club advocate. Finally, our third panelist this evening is Mike Dara. Mike is also a Zone 34 Innovative Club Advocate, but unlike our other two panelists, he is currently the Rotary Coordinator serving Zone 34. So welcome, Chris, George, and Mike. We appreciate all of you being here this evening. Good to be with you, Patrick. Thanks, Thanks Patrick. Patrick. Look forward to it. Great. And as Jeremy mentioned, we have taken questions that have been posed in past sessions, uh, as well as some questions that were submitted to us by those of you who registered for this event. Uh, we've curated them into what we think is a manageable list, and uh, we're gonna 
we're going to see how smart our panelists are tonight as we uh, as we pose these questions to them. Uh oh, I'm I'm thinking they're going to do just <laughs> fine. I have a lot of confidence in these guys. They are they are truly membership experts. So first, thinking back to our very first MAP webinar, which focused on creating a membership pipeline, we received this question. Should you invite a prospective member to a meeting as his or her first introduction to Rotary? George, you want to take that one on? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm glad to. Well, this can work. And frankly, this is still widely practiced. But many clubs find that a Rotary information hour, also called Discover Rotary, is more effective. Whilst meetings give a great opportunity to meet existing members, we should be aware that club meetings are very much aimed at these existing members. And our meetings generally have inclusions that without explanation are rather confusing to the non-initiated. Happy bucks, fines, bossy sergeants, and let's not forget the singing, these can serve to confuse and possibly may even cause unease in prospective members. As a reminder, Rotary information meetings are generally attended by prospective members, unlike fireside chats, which are generally attended by new members. Discover Rotary meetings are the perfect opportunity to discover whether interested folks are a good fit. And of course, it's a two-way traffic they have a better opportunity to obsess whether Rotary is right for them because they know that the club is what the club is all about and have had the opportunity to ask any questions. I also want to mention that inviting interesting parties to your service projects is a great opportunity to engage service-minded individuals. The desire to do service in the community is a prime motivator for possible club members. And I think, I hope that answers the question. I'll be uh, happy to elaborate if required. George, I think you, you answered that beautifully. Thank you so much for that. Um, staying within the topic of creating a membership pipeline, uh, we had a question that said, what prospect tracking tools are available for clubs to use? Chris Jones, would you answer that one for us? Patrick, thanks for the question and good evening, everybody. We, uh, we, we look forward to answering all of your questions this evening and relative to tracking tools, for those of you that are on DACDB, DACDB has a phenomenal customer relationship management or otherwise known as the CRM tool that's available. And it really is an excellent option. If you haven't had the chance to go in and play with it yet, I encourage you to do so. And uh, if you're looking for some training on the CRM module, that's available to you in the support and training tab of DACDB. Um, as a bonus, if the prospect joins, the prospect info can be converted directly into a member inside your club. So it's a really convenient and good tool to use. Other options include Excel spreadsheets, uh, some other programs like MailChimp or HubSpot or even paper index cards. But I think what's most important here is that you have a system and that you use the system regularly and make sure that everybody inside your club is aware of the system and everybody can use the system that you've implemented. And like George, happy to elaborate on any further questions that come up. Great, thank you, Chris. Okay, let's, let's think about our second webinar, which was uh, called Connect with Prospects. You can see the key takeaways from that particular webinar on your screen. Um, we had a question I think fits right into this uh, from, from one of our um, attendees. It says, uh, our previous section mentioned Rotary information or Discover Rotary Hours. How often should a club hold those types of events? George, what do you think? Well, uh, I, I think there's a, um, many answers to that. Uh, how often you schedule the Rotary information or Discover Rotary or will vary according, according uh, greatly based on the size of your club, your attrition rate, that is the rate at which your club loses members, of course, and your attraction rate, plus, of course, the club's capacity and desire to hold these events. In general, though, large clubs should aim for monthly Discover Rotary hours while smaller clubs may consider bi-monthly or quarterly to suit their needs. If you're looking at less than that, the club may need to consider how serious it is 
about growth and development. Solidfeld sounds harsh, but uh, I do believe that this is a, 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 such an important element of the growth of a Rotary Club uh, to have these Discover Rotary meetings on a regular basis. I'll hand that back to you. Thank you, George. And before we move to the next question, let me just mention, I think it was mentioned before, but if you have questions uh, that you would like to add to those that were previously submitted, we hope to get to those. You can put those in the chat in all capital letters. Uh, we'll do our best to get to those. Just wanted to remind you of that. So sticking in this topic of connecting with prospects, um, where is the best place to hold a Rotary Information Hour or a Discover Rotary Hour? Mike Dara, what do you think? That's really important. There are two things you need to do. One is you meet, need to make it convenient, but the other need is that you need to choose a place where you can concentrate on those folks that are joining. It's really good to have three, four, five, visitors in one of these sessions. So you get a chance for all of them to feed off each other with questions and maybe two or three Rotarians. But the important thing is to have it before, let's say convenience, before your meeting. If you do that, hold it in a separate place other than your meeting space. It, it really makes it difficult for the people that are visiting when people keep coming by and they're Rotarians, they've got the best intentions and they start talking to you a bunch. That just disrupts the flow of what's going on. So hold it in a different room and then involve those folks that are looking at your club and make certain you answer their questions. And most of all, you tell them what Rotary is and what expectations Rotary has. Back to you, right. Patrick. And, and, and Mike, just to, to be clear, a uh, separate room could still be in the same building so that it's convenient oh. for the meeting, but, but just a separate quieter space, right? Absolutely, yeah. And if, if you have to do it inside a room that uh, has other things going on, make certain to get well segmented from the other folks and not have a bunch of Rotarians passing by the table. Sure. Okay. Thanks so much. So our next question that was submitted, can an e-club or a virtual based club hold a Rotary Information Hour? Chris, what's your opinion? Patrick, I can tell you that uh, virtual based clubs and e-clubs do a fabulous job of attracting people online on a regular basis. Um, so absolutely. And in fact, during the pandemic, many clubs held Rotary Information Hours and successfully attracted new members during that period of time. And as COVID restrictions have eased, some clubs hold both in-person and virtual information hours. So the, the key to the, all of this is be creative and, and don't let a situation stop you from your attraction methodology. Get, get outside the box and think about how you can solve the problem and then go be a problem resolver. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, George? Next question is, where can I get resources to help me get started with the Discover Rotary Hour? Uh, very important. And uh, I see it has gone through on the chat, that uh, very similar question. I, do, I did want to say, just say what a great opportunity this is to revisit this Discover Rotary, which is a well-proven uh, method of, uh, of, of growing your clubs. Our Zones 33 and 34 web website has a wealth of resources on this and many other membership resources. You will find PowerPoint templates, email invitation templates, and recordings of sample Discover Rotary hours. Our techie folks in the background will put a link in the chat uh, now or soon uh, to allow you to easily access uh, these resources. And of course, don't forget your Rotary coordinator teams were all always ready uh, to assist you with any of these matters. Thanks, George. And, and can you tell us what a resource is? Is that like a resource? <laughs> That's the first time I've been picked up on this accent. Darn. And I thought I was doing so well. My elocution lessons have been going well, I thought. You're doing great. You're doing just great. <laughs> Thank you, George. Okay, our, our third webinar, very important one, we, fo we focused on meaningful onboarding. And again, you see takeaways uh, there on your screen. Chris, how do we get new members off to a good start? Thanks, Patrick. I think one of the key 
components of getting members off to a good start is to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and find out where their desires are to serve. Um, I, I can tell you that the year that I served as club president many, many years ago, um, I sat down with every new member and asked them two questions. The first question I asked them is, what do you want to get from Rotary? The second question I asked them is, what do you want to give to Rotary? And those two questions opened up a line of discussion between myself and the new member that allowed me to be able to plug them into the right place in the club. So having that critical conversation, I think, is very important, that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it doesn't have to be the club president, but it does need to be a club leader and get them engaged in the club in their area of prefer preference. Um, the next thing is making sure that the prospect feels very welcome the very first time they have contact with the club. You know, think about the welcome desk at the club and how welcome people feel there all the way to when they go to sit down inside and sit down at a table. And hopefully they select a table where the people there are welcoming and they didn't say to the individual, which has happened to me on some club visits, uh, you can't sit there, that's Joe's seat. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, we're always very welcoming and, and inviting to any new member or any new prospective member. And take the time to walk them around and introduce them to some other folks that are in the club. So that, that those are some of the key points, I think, that are really important. And I'm seeing in the chat here, we've got some complete onboarding and orientation toolbox, again, at the rizones3334.org website. Great. Thanks, Patrick. And Chris, I won't poll, poll our audience tonight to ask how many people have accidentally sat in the wrong chair before, but I bet it's a pretty <laughs> high percentage uh, among our members. I see lots of nods and grins. Uh, I think I think we just did a poll there. Yeah. Um, okay, so Mike, we have set appropriate expectations in advance of the prospect joining the club. What's next? So this is something that some clubs do well, and other clubs do really poorly. You've got a chance to make this one of those memorable events in somebody's mind. You've got a chance to pull in their coworkers and their family so they get what Rotary is. And frankly, a lot of clubs just miss it. And sometimes they don't even introduce the new members. When you introduce and induct that new member, make it a big deal. Here are the things you do. I mentioned the coworkers. Bring those in, people that the, the new member is going to feel really thankful that they're there to share this experience with them. Bring in their family. When the family gets involved in an induction and they start hearing about things, they understand why mom or dad is getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning to go to some event. I mean, that's crazy, right? But it helps them understand and support them. The other thing you need to do is you need to make certain that when you give them their pin, maybe you give them something else, talk about the ABCs of Rotary, but you make it a big deal. Get their family up there to put the pin on them. There's nothing that is more heartwarming than seeing a four-year-old kid stick their dad with a pin or their mom with a pin, but it's really, really neat. The club loves it and the family is then glued in and part of that whole experience. Great advice, thank you, Mike. So George, we've talked about prior to induction, we've talked about induction being a big deal. We know that we have a hard time holding on to our members in the first three years. Any tips on how we can retain those members after we've set the clear expectation Chris talked about and had this big induction that's, that's meaningful and memorable? How do we hold on to our members? Well, I think, Patrick, there are two very, very important words regarding onboarding of new members. Uh, and I'm, they're not new to this audience, I'm sure. They're engagement and value. Getting a new member is not the end of the process. In many ways, it's the beginning. Engaging the new member in the club's activities, delivering on their expectations, and ensuring their involvement by offering opportunities to serve are critical to their feeling comfortable with their decision to join. We need to remind new members, it's not just about belonging, it's about participating. Red badge, red badge programs and star programs 
are a great way to encourage full involvement in the club's efforts. And social events are also a great way to build on fellowship and friendship, friendship aspects. If you're not familiar with STAR programs uh, or Red Badge, uh, please get in touch with your Rotary Coordinators team and they will uh, enlighten you as to what those are about. Um, so I also uh, mentioned value. It's not just about giving value uh, for their commitment to Rotary, but also recognizing that they are valued as a member of the club. As I like to put it, every member has value. Every member is valued. Life happens and we know we will lose some members who move location or jobs and have changing circumstances. But vibrant clubs have an irresistibility that makes retention far easier. Delivering good meetings, great fellowship, and relevant heartwarming projects are a magnet for caring, service-minded people who are the backbone of our organization. You may have noticed I mentioned irresistible clubs there, and just a quick plug for our meeting next month in January, which will be about irresistible clubs with a great duo, Scott and Pepper, if you haven't heard them, please make sure to register for that. The Zone website is, as always, a great resource to assist you with the onboarding process. Again, our techies will give you a link in the chat box, uh, which I hope shall appear very, very quickly. Now, you will notice I called it Rotary, and just to bite back about my accent, you will all have to remember how to call it that, because our incoming president next year will, of course, be calling it Rotary, not what you've been calling it. So please practice later, Rotary. Thank you. I'll hand it back. Thank you, George. I'm going to have to start practicing that now to have any hope by July 1st <laughs> of saying it uh, as Gordon will. So I'll, I'll be in touch later for some tips from you. Sure. Um, Chris, uh, what, uh, George spoke to this, but what else uh, can we do to get our members fully engaged in our clubs? Thanks, Patrick. And I do want to come back and emphasize one more time of meeting one-on-one -on -one with each member and find out where their passion for purpose is. I mean, that's just such a critical component to get them fully engaged in the club. Um, another idea is why not allow each class of new members, those who have joined Rotary in a given Rotary year, to design, lead, and implement a new service project. I mean, what a great way to get a new group of people not just the one individual, but the group of people to engage in the club and share, again, their passion with the club. They'll bond as a class. They'll show their value to the club and get the club involved in a new part of the local community. Um, so another idea just for you guys to try. I love that, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let's move now to a couple of questions that we got from our fourth webinar, uh, Creating Clubs for Today. Um, this is uh, a topic that, that, that really hits right in the, in the middle of all of the innovation that, that you all have heard about uh, and that we're experiencing, and frankly, as part of our success uh, for those of you who are from Zones 33 and 34. Mike, um, we, we've, we've talked before about innovative membership types, like active service, active social, e-members. Uh, those were all covered in last month's webinar. How successful have these membership types been? And are you aware of any problems such as communication that are associated with these membership types? Well, as George would tell you, these have been very successful. Um, but the key to all of these is meeting people where they are and with what they need. Those needs change over time. And as your club looks at, at your members, you need to think about your members and future members. Maybe you need to offer some options that help. So these options about active social, active service, they get people involved, they keep them involved, but they structure the meetings so that they don't have to, for example, pay for lunch all the time when perhaps they're not interested or they can't eat it. But here are three things that are really important you need to do. You have to pe keep people informed. And as you said, Patrick, the communication is really important. However you do that, whether it's email, TikTok, or whatever mode you use, the whole group needs to be on the same page. The second thing that's important is involve them in leadership. Make certain that if you have board meetings, 
even if your group, let's say it meets at a slightly different time and you've got a satellite or something, make certain those folks have access to coming to the board meetings and that they feel a part. The third part is, and this is crucial, especially when you're talking about things like virtual clubs or an e-club part of your club, streaming it to folks, you have to find a way so that folks interact. You can do that in Zoom. You can do that in a variety of different formats, but the power of Rotary is establishing that network of people that want to do good. And if we miss that network and you don't give that opportunity for folks to get to, to develop those friendships, you're really missing something. So I wrote down one other thing when I heard you talking, um, and that's this. We presented a variety of types. You may find out that that's not quite what your club means. The beautiful thing today is that you have the flexibility to change and to make your club fit your members. So do that, look at it, but keep thinking of those same things. Communicate give access to leadership, and keep the interactions going. Thank you, Mike. I, I've got a follow-up for you. This, this was submitted by uh, one of our participants. Should we be concerned that offering less expensive innovative, memberships type, innovative membership types will cause our club to lose members who pay full dues? I've heard that before. And the reality is, if your club has pretty good retention, your folks are staying there because they're getting value for their money and for their time. What I found in our club developed one of the first satellites. It was a fun satellite geared toward younger professionals. People thought, wow, you know, we're not charging them for meals. Are we going to lose a number of people? We lost no people to the satellite. The satellite just allowed us to grow. So what we found out of that was and, and I will say, some clubs have said they have lost people to a new style. That's not bad. If that new style attracted one of your existing members, that means that member felt it actually satisfied their needs a little bit better. So instead of having to lose that member to either not being in Rotary or to a completely new club, you gave them a transition to something that met their needs. It doesn't happen often that the main club loses folks like that, but it's really not a bad thing. You keep the person engaged in Rotary. Great, thank you, Mike. We received this next question, I believe it came in last night uh, from one of you who was registered for, for this evening session. Um, Chris, I'm gonna ask you to answer this one. The question says, I'm guiding my members in my club to accept some of the techniques I've learned in the MAP webinar series. What can I do to overcome resistance to change in my club? So once again, I'm going to refer folks back to the rizones33-34.org website because there's some great content and material on the website. If you go there and you click on the search box and you type in the word culture, you'll come up with a litany of information on how you can uh, help affect the club culture and to build a guiding coalition, to create vision inside your club, and most importantly, start to communicate heavily and celebrate short-term wins. Um, the Zone 3334 website, and I, and I know we've referenced that a number of times here this evening, but there is just a, uh, a, a ton of information available to you on there that you can use in curating better membership practices inside your club. So I would encourage you to take a look at uh, culture as a search term on the rizones3334.org website and see the many items that are available to you there. There's just too many to go over in this short seminar here this evening. But there's a, essentially a step-by-step -step recipe for, for dealing with these types of cultural changes, correct? That's the beautiful part about the content that's on the Zone 3334 website is that it is designed in a recipe format. And like any other recipe, think about this for a second, like any other recipe, if you leave out an ingredient, you're going to end up with varied results. And so one of my favorite sayings that I've learned from my wife here lately is modify the plan 
you'll modify the results. Follow the plan as it's laid out in the recipe format. You will get the results as the recipe calls for. Not much different than baking cake or baking the cookies that you love. I know your wife, and I would listen to her every time. So I'm <laughs> glad you you repeated that. And and I have no choice. I have to listen to her. So. <laughs> so we have had at least a couple of questions that have been put in the chat, and we have some time for those. Um, I have uh, two elves who are very uh, ably feeding those uh, questions to me since I can't follow all the chats. So thank you to my elves, Billy and uh, Sandra, who are who are doing that. The first question, in previous years, our district membership chair funneled leads to us, which we followed up on. Is that benefit still available? Now, I think this was answered in the chat, but I think it's an important enough topic to, for one of you to take this. Um, George, how would you like to field that one? I, I, I presume we're talking about leads that come from RI. Uh, I presume that too, yes. Yeah, which, which has been around for quite a number of years uh, with mixed result. And I'm saying the mixed result because different districts have uh, responded to it in different ways. And those that have done it very well have got specific people in charge of those aspects. They receive, uh, the district governor and the DMC receive these uh, and uh, they are farmed out using best judgment. Now, districts that are doing this well can be successful. These leads are what you would call hot sales leads. These are people who have gone onto the website, the Rotary International website. And if you notice in the top right hand, you know, it, it used to just say um, donate, but now it says join or donate, but you can join. When they hit that join, there are several questions. That's what generates the lead. That's why it's a very hot lead. This is someone who said, you know, I've looked into Rotary, I'm interested in joining. So that's why they've got to be treated with a, a, a matter of urgency a, and, and be, be very careful with them. This is someone that's giving you their information for you to act on. Uh, the decisions have to be made about which Rotary Club may appear to be best for them a, and a, feeding that out to the clubs. Where it has fallen down, and we've got to be brutally honest here, is often when it gets out to the club in, in, in a lack of reaction or quick reaction to them. I would just ask all to recognise how important these leads are. No one's saying that in any way they will lead to uh, a member every time, uh, but there's, they're a great prospect. This is someone that's taken the trouble to ask. So the system is still applying. If you're not getting them through, I would uh, suggest that you speak to the DMC for your district and say, what is the practice within our district? Should I be receiving them? Uh, and, um, you know, can I have some please? So please try that. Thank you. And, and I hear a common theme with what you just said to something Chris said earlier in the creating a membership pipeline uh, section about having a system, being organized, working that system, that, that that's the key. Because as you said, these folks have already expressed an interest, they are truly a hot lead. Yeah, absolutely. So and let's treat them like that. Yeah. Um, there is a question here, and I think George just may come back to you. It says, in the introduction module, you spoke of value for members. The first two items were time and commitment, but this person didn't understand the third value element. Was that you that spoke of that I earlier? Did, I, I did bring up value. Uh, value, uh, I was suggesting is a two-way traffic. You know, we must convince the person that's come into the Rotary Club that we value their time, we value their commitment, and we also uh, value their expertise because expertise is an important element of this. That's what makes Rotary successful in when we do our projects is the expertise of the people we bring in. The wider that aspect of expertise, the better we have. So those are all value aspects that a new member bring to us. Uh, what we must in return is give them value for that commitment, for that expertise, and for their time that they are committing uh, committing to Rotary by, uh, you know, um, effectively giving them, we can't give them everything they want, but if they, if they want to get involved in service projects, let's make sure that they're doing service projects and meaningful uh, service projects. Most people are interested in, in advancing their community initially. I know that that can change through time, 
but initially that service to community is hugely important. If you've got great projects and involve people very, very quickly, we did mention the STARS programme. The STARS programme has a project element to it where new members into a club actually take on a specific project together and work as a team. That's a great way to initiate people because they feel that affinity to one another and help each other through those early stages. So I hope that's answered it. Uh, if not, uh, I'll take another stab at it, uh, or uh, if you send me an email, I will be glad to elaborate. Thank you, George. Uh, we, we had a question, are there any general public relations campaigns available? Um, there, are, there are, on the Rotary website, in the Brand Center, there are a variety of, um, they're not actual campaigns that are ongoing from Rotary International. Rotary International Lee is talking about that. We might ask Jeremy about that later on. He may know something about a, an overarching campaign in some locations, but there are some great um, resources that you can use to plug in your club's name, to use people of action photos, all these sorts of things in what you're, you're putting out. And I'm just gonna put in a plug here. When I look at what people have on their website and we wanna have people of action, I have to say, most of the things I see on websites are not people of action, they're people shaking hands. So when somebody's talking about a Rotary campaign, whether you're doing it at Rotary International, which does a great job of getting people excited, they capture the excitement and the smiles in their faces doing something, whether it's at Rotary International or whether it's your club putting out stuff on, on public media it's or public uh, image type stuff. It's very important that you show those sorts of images. They tell loads, much more than anything that you've put in print. Uh, uh, Jeremy, would you have anything you'd like to add? Sure, I'm happy to chip in. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's been some great campaigns over the years. The People of Action one and, and others are a great example of that, Connect for Good. Um, and I think it's, um, you know, it, it's one of the big challenges we have in this organization is that if, if we're going to roll out sort of an international, fully funded press campaign or media campaign, it becomes very, very expensive and very difficult to do that effectively on a truly global basis in each of the you know, hundreds of countries that we're in. Uh, but, but actually, I think it, it segues nicely into the discussion the board is having now about the, the value of regionalization and the, about the value of creating campaigns that are, that are not one size fit all, that, that respond to the needs of our members in our communities, in our regions, in our cultures. So watch this space. I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing more culturally um, suited regional campaigns coming out as we develop the whole concept of regionalization moving forward. Thank you, Jeremy. And let's see here. Our last question, I think, based, we're 42 minutes past the hour. Uh, Chris, I think this may be right on for you. Has Yeah, yeah. Has the MAP program addressed how we prepare and motivate more Rotarians to simply make the ask to potential members? Well, that's all about getting the ask out, right? Um, and Lee, great question. I did put a, a quick chat in, in the chat here for you about that, but our upcoming session on irresistible clubs will address this. And once our clubs become irresistible, people will want to join. And so, you know, a lot of people don't get excited about asking people to come join Rotary because let's face it, in some of our clubs, we don't have anything exciting going on. And uh, if we can get our clubs to be excited, exciting and irresistible, getting people to, to make the ask will not be a hard challenge whatsoever. Great. Thank you, Chris. And thank you to all of you who submitted questions over the past few weeks and in some of our previous sessions, as well as those, as well as those of you who uh, posed questions this evening. Uh, you managed to do so in a way that brought us just perfectly in on time. So uh, thank you for that. Panelists, uh, thank you for uh, sharing your wisdom with this evening. We appreciate that. And I will now pass this back over to Director Jeremy to take us to the closing part of our program. Well, thank you so, pa so much, Patrick, uh, for ably hosting us this evening and for our panel panelists as well and our Q&A moderators. And of course, most importantly to you, our audience of passionate membership champions. Uh, 
We need to continue to make sure that membership is front and center as our top internal priority. Remember also that membership increase and growth is just an end in itself. It, it's an indicator that our clubs are healthy and vibrant, that we're providing the value our members want, and that we're equipped with the capacity and expertise to take on bigger and bolder high impact projects and programs in our communities. Membership growth provides us with the tools to increase our impact and expand our reach into our communities. Membership growth is the best indicator that we're enhancing our participants' levels of engagement and that we're adapting as an organization to better reflect the needs of our members. And our community is becoming more diverse and inclusive, broadening our membership base as we do. In other words, MAPS goals are directly aligned with the key pillars of Rotary International's action plan and other key priorities. And that's important. So let's continue to keep membership a top priority and to grow Rotary for all these reasons. Before we go, I'd like to tell you the, about a few more exciting events that are up and coming uh, at zone level. Uh, join us on January 16th with our next uh, MAP bite size webinar and find out how to become, as we heard, an irresistible club with none other than Rotary International President nominee, Stephanie Yurchik. The next day, of January 17th, see how our members have been working through our foundation, transforming communities with highly effective projects of impact. And then find out how to promote our projects by better collaborating with local media partners in Zone 33's Arctic Teams Learning and Fun public image series. So hopefully tonight has been valuable for each and every one of you. It's been a pleasure for us. It's great to see your faces for a change, with some of those holiday jerseys and uh, Santa hats. But on behalf of myself and Rotary International Director Normally Patrick and our full MAP team, I'd like to wish you, your families, the very best for a wonderful holiday season and a happy and prosperous new year when it comes. Thank you all so much. Good night.